Thank you all for coming and showing, showing up here at 9 a.m. And special thank you goes to all the speakers and volunteers in the audience who showed up here after the last night's speaker's dinner. We are the oldest volunteer-run Python conference on the planet. We've been traveling around Europe since, since 2002, visiting different countries. We are in Prague for the second time. After a very successful conference last year, we decided to come back to Prague and meet again in the very same building where Pluto stopped being a planet. <laughs> EuroPython is organized by the EuroPython Society. It is a nonprofit organization based in Sweden and it's entirely run by volunteers. The Czech Republic has a big and active local Python community that organizes PyCon, PyLadies, Meetups, and many more. I am Mia. I'm a member of the local Python community here in Prague and a co organizer of EuroPython. I believe that EuroPython brings so much to every place it visits, and that's why I really like the idea to bring it here to Prague for the second time. Moving the conference to another city and country takes a lot of work. Staying in the same place allowed us to use that energy to increase the number of different activities and events during the conference. However, staying in the same city relies on the support of the local community. Here you can see the sprints that the Czech Python community runs every summer in the countryside. Everyone participates and many important decisions are made here. So we brought up the idea of staying in Prague for another year during those sprints and the local community has been very supportive. So big thanks goes to the local Python community. EuroPython offers opportunities for people to participate, speak, or volunteer at the conference. It's always easier to join an event when it's happening nearby. So last year, our largest group of participants was Czech. EuroPython also hosts events open to the public, such as Jungle Girls, Humble Data, or PyLadies workshops. EuroPython creates opportunities for people to connect. And by connecting together, we can learn so much from each other. So here I am, I'm standing on the very same stage like last year when I was welcoming you. And I am incredibly proud of everything we have accomplished this year. I'm very happy that we have organized more events than ever. I'm very happy that the local community is more involved than ever. I'm very happy that we have more volunteers than ever, and I'm very happy to welcome you to EuroPython 2024. <laughs> now, please welcome my colleague Arthur from the EuroPython Society. Good morning, everyone. I'm Arthur. I'm the current chair of the EuroPython Society. And uh, EuroPython Society is the nonprofit organization. We're based in Sweden. We're the organizers of this conference. And as Mia mentioned, this is the 23rd EuroPython already. For whom is the first EuroPython? Raise your hand, please. That's a lot of people. I hope that you're going to have a great time uh, today. Uh, my first EuroPython was in 2016, and I've been to pretty much everyone ever since, so I hope this is first for you and then for many, month, many more to come in the future. Now, I'm not going to take too much of the time in the opening. If you want to learn more about what EuroPython Society is, there's a QR code for our website. You can visit it. We have the booth at the, well, right outside the, this room, and uh, we also ha will host an open space on Friday, so you can feel, come to, feel welcome to join us and uh, ask any questions you have about the EuroPython Society. Also, if you're organizing a conference or a meetup, uh, or running a cool Python-related project in Europe. Uh, we have uh, a grant program, and the, we have the, well, some other means to support you as well. So please come talk to us, and we'll be happy to help. We are all run by volunteers, uh, and Mia will talk more about it in a second. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all for the site for now.
As Arthur said, we are all volunteers. I've heard some people think that there is an event management company behind this, or some people believe that the organizers are paid for their work, but that's not true. And I remember the first time I heard that this incredible conference I have attended was entirely run by volunteers. So can you really believe it yourself? So let's please all give a huge round of applause to all the amazing volunteers. So now some of you might be wondering, but why do people work for free? I asked my colleagues and I would like to show you what they said. So let's try it again. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm Gilay Barabash. I am Pylaner. I am Cloud Engineer. And also this year, I am part of the program team. My name is Anushka, and I am a volunteer in this year's EuroPython operations team. I am involved in the Czech Python community on multiple levels. I help organizing local meetups in Brno, and I also support our local PyLadies chapter by being kind of like ambassador for PyLadies and also helping with organization of uh, the local activities. And I'm also a member of the board of our local NGO supporting the Python community. My name is Jody and I am a data scientist. I've been involved in the Python community for around eight years now. I'm Nasha Konoti and I like to call myself a lifelong volunteer. My name is Laiz. Hi, I'm Fanis. Why do you volunteer for Europe Python? I decided to help EuroPython uh, last year, a lot of fun. I decided this year again to volunteer and help with the program committee. This year I'm helping with sponsor relationships and accessibility. And sometimes it's very hard to find the right path to study, to grow and to learn new stuff. That's why I decided to be part of the community and also part of the program team to find the right talks for you that for any level it can be interesting, if it's your beginner or your experienced developer. I moved to Prague a few years ago, and after settling in, I joined the team organizing Python meetups and local PyCon. In 2022, I learned that EuroPython was also moving to Prague, and I immediately got involved. My first in-person EuroPython experience was a few years back. I had a talk accepted, so I arrived at the venue in the morning, and it's been two minutes there, and I'm already starting to hand out lanyards. Um, two minutes, first time at the conference in Flash, and I'm already doing this. I've been involved in the Python community for around eight years now. So I decided to volunteer for EuroPython because I came to the conference for the first time last year, really fell in love with it, and one of my friends, Laís, she's one of the organizers, so she convinced me to come on board to volunteer this year. Last year, I had the opportunity to be an on-site volunteer at EuroPython, and this year, I have the most amazing opportunity to volunteer to help organize EuroPython, which I'm very excited about. So what's the most rewarding thing about volunteering for EuroPython? I believe that the most rewarding thing by helping EuroPython, you can put a little bit of yourself in that conference. So EuroPython 2024 is not just the second year that happened in Prague, but it's just, just the EuroPython conference. It's a collective effort of many people, day and night, sending emails, working with huge spreadsheets, spending lots of time discussing what will be the better for you. Because this conference is for you. It's, we are just trying to help you uh, enjoy the most that you can uh, from this event, trying to have the best program as possible, trying to have helping the most people that we can to arrive to the conference. I've learned from EuroPython that uh, giraffes have uh, vocal cords. Uh, I really liked the organization and I liked the EuroPython vibe. We share a lot of values with the organizers, so since then I stick around. Well, for me, Python community is love, so offering a helping hand with EuroPython was kind of like obvious choice. Unfortunately, last year I didn't manage to take part in EuroPython and I'm really, really happy that I can make it happen this year. So looking forward. See you there, guys. So the Python community is really important to me. It's been an important part of how I transitioned from a 
non-engineering degree into tech. And it's really important for me to support an event like EuroPython, which is kind of at a core event where we can all come together and share our ideas and support each other. I volunteer for EuroPython because it's my way of giving back to the community, to the Python community and to the tech community at large. The Python community has played such a huge role in my growth in tech, in my academics, in my career. It has given me opportunities. It has connected me to so many people. I've built lifelong friendships. I've been exposed to so much that has influenced me positively, um, helped me in my tech journey. So why not give back if I've benefited this much? to help influence others. So I really want to encourage you that if you feel like I want to make things better or I believe that this is a great opportunity and I want to just join and make it continue happening, there are many activities and things happening in the very conference, so your help is super valuable. Everyone can make a change. Your opinion, your time, your observations, your ideas can transform your Python to be a better conference every year. Organizing events where people gather to share their ideas, mentor, and support each other, I have the opportunity to change other people's lives. The most rewarding thing for me about volunteering is seeing and um, knowing that people have been impacted. I mean, there's high probability that impacted people would impact other people. That's it for me. It's very rewarding. So the impacts. I remember uh, Raquel, the previous chair, uh, said that we are like family. I do agree that I feel like we are a big family. Um, we kind of, you know, every year when we gather together, it's like a big family reunion. And I really appreciate having friends around the world. And we really know each other because we kind of work together. We know, feels very good friendship that I really appreciate that. And thank you, EuroPython. And I volunteer for EuroPython because of the people. It's always so much fun to go to the conference and see my friends every single year. It's also the largest volunteer-led Python conference in Europe, which means everyone is there. And the most rewarding thing that I've uh, received from uh, EuroPython is the energy from volunteers attending, let's say, the, the biggest nerd camp uh, in Europe. That's why I volunteer for Europe. This year, we have a very large team. Despite that, it still takes thousands of hours of work to put the conference together. Some people spend a few hours a month. Some spend a few hours a week. Some spend a few hours a day, every day. And some spend all day, every day. How many of you have, or have already seen this meme? Raise your head. <laughs> Lots of people. So this is the sad reality of organizing EuroPython and uh, open source in general. So now you might be wondering, why aren't there even more volunteers? Would that solve the issue? The issue is that people need to be able to communicate, and this is work in and of itself. You can see in this famous image where each additional person adds multiple additional lines of communication. While we could narrow down the number of people who organize EuroPython to the same five people every year, as some similar size conference do, we choose not to, because one of our core values is being open and welcoming. We choose to take on this additional overhead as it makes our conference more diverse and reflective of the community. And we also want to take this opportunity to say, this means we welcome more people to join us, as it's essential to the organization's long-term sustainability. Let's talk about another important aspect of this conference. We are all participants here, and each one, each of us influences how things go. Our interactions have the power to shape this conference. And every single of you holds that power. Our words have the power to lift others up or to tear them down. So let's please be kind. And if you see a volunteer, say thank you. And to make sure that everyone feels safe and welcome, we have a specific code of conduct. 
Now, Naomi will come to the stage to tell you more about it. Good morning. It is great to be here, even after last night's speaker dinner. Um, so first of all, yes, code of conduct. Uh, please go on the website and look for the code of conduct. You can't miss it. Please read it. If you think you know it, uh, we reworked it extensively last year to, to improve it, so you might not know it. So please, please look at that. Uh, I want to say a couple of quick things about that. Um, in general, in terms of thinking about code of conduct and co behavior in general, um, intent is nice, but it's actually the result that quite often matters. If you step on someone's foot, it still hurts, whether you meant it or not, and you really should say you're sorry and try not to do that again, okay? Um, and another thing I think that is quite often mentioned in terms of code of conduct violations is people will apologize by saying, I'm sorry you were offended. That is, by the way, not really an apology. If you rephrase that, if you turn that around and say instead of I'm sorry you were offended, I'm sorry I insulted you, then we're getting a little bit closer to the truth. So um, I gave a couple of examples when we first came back from the pandemic back in Dublin when I talked about code of conduct. Um, and again, it's, um, there are different ways that you can say things. So uh, if you uh, haven't seen someone for a long time and say, hey, you look great, that is probably a compliment. Uh, if you <clears throat> haven't met someone at all and you sort of in a creepy way say, hey, you look great, that's probably just creepy, don't do that, okay? Uh, it's the same thing if you uh, say, you are a very reasonable person, that is probably a compliment. If, and I have gotten this myself, if you say to someone, you know, you're not really that crazy for a trans person, that is not a compliment, I promise you, and I have gotten that. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I want to mention is the idea of reporting. And code of conduct causes a lot of paranoia, and um, you know, there are a lot of things to think about if something happens and you ask yourself, should I report this? And, um, well, you've got basically two options. You can not report it, and if you don't report it, you either just do nothing about it, which um, I can tell you I've had things happen to me where I chose not to report it, and it's never a very satisfying experience. Whoever did the thing, said the thing, whatever, can continue to do or say or whatever without any feeling that they did anything wrong, and you feel terrible. Um, on the other hand, you can, you can try to deal with it personally. That occasionally can work if you have the right person on the other end. I have done that. Uh, but it also risks a lot more con conflict where you have no support. <laughs> so what we're asking is that in general, you feel comfortable, you feel willing to uh, report things to the Code of Conduct Committee, okay? And, and we're all listed there, I'm one of them. You can email one of us directly, you can talk to us directly, you can send uh, an email to uh, the Code of Conduct email address, which only goes to the four of us on the committee. And we will do everything we can to make sure that uh, we look at it. And if it's something that's just, um, a minor thing, you know, it would be good if the conference did such and such, I would feel more comfortable. You can tell us that too. We will capture all of that stuff to pass along to the organizers. So all of those things we encourage you to think about reporting. If you see something happening to one of your friends uh, and they don't want to report it, I mean, that's a personal decision. You cannot make that decision. You can still inform us of the general situation so that we can think about things that we can do to, to make things better. So, so that's the overall message. Please let us know in one way or another if there is something we can do to make everybody feel comfortable, feel safe, feel welcome, and we will definitely capture that and make sure that, that we pass it along. If it's something that needs immediate action, we will do our very best to make sure that um, you know, we protect people's privacy but also address that issue. So all of that said, as I say, go read the Code of Conduct. It's fascinating reading. Uh, and I will see you around.
Hi, it's me again. Um, and also special mention to our sponsors. Uh, without the support of our sponsors, the event wouldn't be possible. Uh, a special thank you to Microsoft, Logfire, and Bloomberg. And uh, also a special thank you to Kraken for being the sponsor of the PyLadies lunch. That's tomorrow. And the special thank you to the Python Software Foundation for being a diversity and inclusion sponsor of the event. There are people here in the audience who wouldn't be able to come to the conference without that support. So thank you, PSF, very much. And yeah, that's all for the sponsor part. That's all. Round of applause for the sponsor. We have some accessibility measures in place. Uh, so if you're interested in accessibility, please go to our website where we have described all of the measures we have, like for example, having a quiet room or neurodiversity bag, low stimulation room, barrier-free access, and many more. This year, we have a record number of events to enhance your conference experience. In the past days, we've had Django Girls Workshop, CAPI Summit, PyBurger, Humble Data, WebAssembly Summit, Speakers Dinner, and today we will have Pi Game Zero Workshop, PyLady Social, on Thursday, PyLady's events, social event, and on the weekend, the fun doesn't end. So Pi Game Zero Workshop, it is uh, aimed at beginners, and if you would like to make your own game using Python, check it out, you can find all the information on our web. Uh, we have uh, a lot of PyLadies events this year. We have a self-defense workshop to learn how to defend against inappropriate behavior. We have I Am Remarkable workshop to improve your self-promotion skills. PyLadies lunch for networking opportunities and also Wednesday social event for networking as well. Uh, also, just to mention that there is a wait list for I Am Remarkable and self-defense workshop, but the rest do, uh, you can join even if you're not registered. We also have our main social event, and this year we are in the stunning X monastery Gabrielochi, where we have rented the entire area for you, and there will be different activities. So there will be board games, which means if you're into board games, you are uh, welcome to bring your favorite ones. Uh, we will have a jam session, so if you're a musician, please bring your instrument as well. There will be a DJ corner and also chill zone to enjoy the night view of Prague. Uh, you, the ticket is not included in the conference ticket, so uh, have a look at our web. Also, we have uh, our sprint weekend. This is a unique opportunity for you to engage with various kind of open source projects, whether you're a beginner or you're an experienced developer. Uh, it will be held in a different venue and it is organized by you. So if you would like to propose a project to work on, please check out our website for more information. If you like playing video games, then check out Euro PyBots tournament and there are prizes for top spots. You can find more information on our website. Uh, they also have open spaces, which are available during the three conference days. And if you're interested, please check the registration booth. Uh, we also have lightning talks, which is the most fun part of the conference. We will have lightning talks on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday evening. And if you would like to propose a lightning talk, please check the scan the QR code or uh, open this form and uh, we will contact you later. So as we draw to the end of the opening, I want to end by saying this is your conference and we hope you will enjoy it.